the concept of mining in Infinite Lagrange initially seems fairly straightforward. Just send a mining ship to some ore, but there are some intricacies for the more discerning player that help to get more out of the experience. In this video, which is kindly sponsored by the team over at Infinite Lagrange, we'll explore some of those intricacies. Specifically, this video will cover the types of resource you mine for, mining fleets, blueprint upgrades, defending your miners, and then mining platforms. I've included timestamps in the video description to help you find the part you're most interested in. If my voice is new to you, I'm Farrister, and my channel is all about giving you useful or interesting content around games, including most recently Infinite Lagrange. If you're new to the channel, be sure to take a look around for some other Infinite Lagrange videos, and perhaps consider subscribing. That helps you to be notified of future videos as they go live, and helps me to grow the audience. There are three key types of resource you mine for in Infinite Lagrange. There's metal, which is shown by a brown colour, crystal, which is shown by a purple colour, and deuterium, which is shown by a blue colour. They're all useful in differing amounts, and are all used for all of your key base or ship construction tasks. When you look at a mining node, you'll see some information about the resources contained within it. For the most part, they'll contain one specific resource. Each mining node also has a level which is indicative of both the number of resources contained within it, and the tier of mining ship you'll need to use in order to mine it. It's worth stressing that higher level rocks don't give you an increased income on an hourly rate, it just means you'll be able to mine it for longer before depleting the node. When you first go to mine a node, you'll be prompted to create a mining fleet. For most new players, and most endgame players, that mining fleet will simply have a single mining ship in it. But for the early to mid game, it's well worth considering adding an AC721 logistics destroyer to a small mining or even a medium mining ship. To do that, when you click to create a fleet, simply click between the different ports in your base, R being for resource and A, B and C being for other ships. The reason for this is due to the extensive cargo bay on the AC721, which means your mining ship can keep mining for longer before returning home. Less travel time, more mining means a higher income rate for you. By the time you get to a large mining ship, it's not really worth it anymore, as the large miner has plenty of storage aboard, and you can reuse those command points more usefully. To use larger mining ships, you'll need the requisite base upgrades. Another top tip around mining fleets is to give the name of the fleet something scary sounding. Tank fleet, carrier fleet, whatever you feel like. It'll make absolutely zero difference against the AI, but if players see your fleet flying around, they might think twice before attacking it. Psychological warfare, if you like. It's probably not hugely effective, but if it stops one in every 100 attacks, that's still worth typing in, right? Much like your other ship blueprints, your utility ships get experience which can be used to upgrade them, particularly in upgrading the mining drill, or the amount of storage available which makes them more efficient miners. Unlike other ship blueprints, your mining ships will generate that experience from just flying out and mining, so be sure to regularly upgrade them as soon as you have the points available. Overall, the mining upgrades could make your mining ships up to 60% quicker at mining, or able to carry over 300% as much haul. So, a considerable increase, and well worth doing. If you play a lot of Infinite Lagrange, you've probably experienced the frustration of logging in to find all of your mining ships sat at your home base because some bigger kid was mean to them around the crystal node. There are two commands that will help you with this. Firstly, Guard will let you choose a specific mining node or mining platform and assign one fleet to protect it. Those fleets won't go off hunting or defending other areas, but will engage fleets that come to attack a specific location. That's useful if you're hoping to defend a very specific spot. 
The second command is blockade, which will require two fleets to effectively order. The advantage of blockade is that one of the fleets will automatically engage any enemy fleets that come into the operations area, which makes it particularly useful for use in conjunction with a mining platform which has a larger operations area. It's also a great way to level up your fleets, since you'll often find them engaging pirate fleets whilst you're offline. The disadvantage of both of these methods is that they leave your fleets exposed, particularly to player attack. Even just attacking pirates, your fleets will take attrition damage over time, which means that without support ships, you'll probably have to send them back to base to repair at some point. Still, they're an effective way to keep your mining ships mining, which is what you really want. Mining platforms are an effective way to get more from the resources out there. By placing a mining platform, you'll get an increase of between 10 and 20% yield, depending on the tier of mining platform you place. Advanced mining platforms also act as a drop-off point for mining ships, meaning they don't have to travel all the way back to your home base and can spend more time actually mining. To build a mining platform, you'll need a free utility ship and use the build command on the map. Doing so, you'll notice the wide area of four squares that a mining platform covers by way of operations area, and any nodes mined within that area will receive the yield benefit. It's also particularly handy for use in conjunction with the blockade command, as it means your fleets can cover a wider effective area. In the mid to late game, mining platforms are exceptionally useful in helping you get more yield from the nodes out there, so are well worth the small upfront investment. If I've missed some of your top tips, or if this video has been helpful, please let me know in the comments. Thanks again to the team over at Infinite Lagrange for sponsoring this video, and if you'd like to see more Infinite Lagrange content, be sure to hit that like button so I know it's something you'd like to see more of. Otherwise, as always, thank you for watching.